We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and welcome to one of our actual favorite, other favorite races on the calendar. We have so many, like, favorite races on the calendar. Every but, race like, is our favorite race, Catherine. I mean, <laughs> that's just where we're at. <laughs> that's true, especially this time of year, going back to back from Coda to Mexico to Brazil, where we are now. But this, like, Brazil's just so cool. Like, let's be, it's just, it's really cool. It is. And I think the part of Brazil that we love is like, you never know what's going to happen because of weather. Like right. it's just, it, that plays such a big factor into the track and the stands like class. Right. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a very like unknown of what's going to happen because weather plays such a big factor into the race weekend. And also it's just, it's a short, fast track. And the sprints are exciting. There's lots of action. So I think that's why we why we like it. Yeah, I mean, speaking of, like, never knowing what's going to happen, two years ago, Kevin Magnuson got pole for, you know, Haas's first pole ever at, you know, in Brazil. And that was, no, nobody saw that coming because nobody expected the weather that came in. And, you know, like you said, last year we had that really bad storm that damaged the, um, what's it called? The grandstand, which was, wild and then this year we're you know all into the uh, Ayrton Center recognition and remembrance and we'll talk about that in a little bit but that's been happening all weekend long and will continue to happen all weekend and yeah it's I think it's gonna be a fun weekend and then we're off for three weeks for the, another extended break because the Formula One calendar is really weird this year this is my last race until our, our race finale Oh, also that, because Emily is going to be disappearing on us for a little while, and so we will have some special guests who will be named later I'm once I figure that out. I'm completely off-grid, <laughs> yes. so we'll not be able to connect to anyone in the U.S., typical Emily fashion. Also, Catherine, I think is. I found you a co-host for Qatar. Okay, good to know. So. There you go. <laughs> we'll talk about that after we're done Again, recording. We're a podcast that only talks about things it's about in the, the future, future, not about the current week. But currently, in this week and last week, our good buddy, old man Alonzo, is still feeling under the weather. He was diagnosed with an intestinal infection. Let your mind wander to wherever you would like of what that means. Um, but he missed media day last week for Mexico. He went to Europe to see a specialist, um, and get some treatment. He's also missing media day this week. Um, which was yesterday as we record. Correct. He missed, I guess I should say. And so, yeah, hoping he feels better. I, again, he's the oldest driver on the grid and he's sick and he's still racing and pulling G's like it's nothing so um that's impressive but hoping yeah. you know hoping he gets better and wishing him well yeah like there are some illnesses that I can imagine like would make driving uncomfortable like perhaps being a week out of having your appendix appendix taken out or um, the day I, before your appendix burst <laughs> or the day before your appendix burst and you try to drive in practice but I think the fact that you know it's it was severe enough that Fernando went all the way back to Europe to see a specialist to deal with whatever it was that he picked up between the United States and Mexico and wherever he was during that period, which if you worked with me at camp in 2023, um, I'm just going to say worms and leave it at that. And you'll know what I'm thinking about, but I don't think Fernando has worms. Just going to put that out there, but it camp reference insert here. Well, old man Alonzo is, is sickly so wishing him well hoping he feels better and and has a better weekend well. after last week exactly hoping things go well for him in brazil this weekend right. um also i would like to highlight this because i find this incredibly hilarious mercedes has taken it upon themselves to hire a fashion manager for their drivers next year which if you listen to this podcast frequently, you know my gripes with George's fashion and him constantly wearing turtleneck sweaters when it's 75 degrees out. Understand what he's going for, however, it just does not hit. 
So yeah, George and Kimmy next year are going to be getting a fashion manager, which I think is hilarious because before they're like, oh, Lewis, you can hold it down for both of them. George is going to look like an idiot. You look, you know, amazing. And we don't need anything. And now it's like, oh, wow. Okay. We have a child who wears joggers and <laughs> socks that are don't match and tennis shoes. And we have George. So... We need some, we need help uh, here. We need to call in the cavalry and and get something going here. So yeah, I'm in, I'm intrigued to see how this goes. I think it's interesting. Also, I think it's very on brand with Mercedes that they're doing this. But yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's very interesting, especially in light of the fact that Tommy Hilfiger, who has been a longtime fashion partner with Mercedes, is leaving after this year, and there are going to be other fashion sponsors coming in. Isn't didn't Adidas partner with Mercedes? I think it's or... Adidas. It's either Adidas or Puma. But Puma's like already No, no, Puma's it. also leaving cuz Right, that's right. Puma They're and leaving. and Tommy were both are both leaving. So Adidas is coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so you have you, you know you have a lot of different, you know, fashion brands that are coming in. Obviously, Lewis has been, you know, he, he just kind of woke force. up a driving force <laughs> for fashion on the grid. He, I, he, he talk, he's talked about it, especially recently of, of, you know, basically he was coming on and, you know, was kind of tired of the, the day-to-day attire that you're supposed to wear, that you're legally obligated to wear by virtue of your contract. He's like, I'm not going to do that anymore and started wearing really cool outfits and collaborating with really cool designers and doing everything fashion related that Lewis loves to do and that's really become part of the identity of the off-track portion of Formula One for the drivers you know Lewis Hamilton Joe Guan Yu I think it'll actually be really interested interesting to see how how Lewis goes ahead with all of that when he's at Ferrari next year just with the Ferrari identity being so specific but we'll see how that goes but they, if they can handle was, Kimi Raikkonen I honestly think they can, they can let do Lewis anything. slide with a few things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But to go back to the fact of like with Mercedes, they, they just kind of want to make sure that the drivers look less ridiculous as, as you have taken issue with George. And then Kimmy is, is a young, he is a child and he will learn at some point and maybe he will become the next great fashion maven. No, I don't think so, but maybe he will. That's putting way too much in his bucket. I think, no, they're like, wow, we're losing the Met Gala co-chair and now we're stuck with George and a child. So we need some help here. Yes. (laughs) But honestly, okay, so I just want to pause and go back for a second. So we were talking about Adidas. I now in my head can't get the picture of like Toto just rocking three stripes head to toe <laughs> walking on the grid or like on his little scooter like now I just on can't unsee it I can't unsee it just head to toe he like walks into the paddock and like has the rip away pants <laughs> and he's just like let's go <laughs> Toto and his rip away pants watch for it next year him and his rip away pants Please. and Zach Brown with his tramp stamp and his sleeves. And his sleeves. Going full late 90s for you guys. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, to move away from fashion and to boring procedure, uh, which is it was a great transition, but Honda and Alpine, as engine suppliers, were found to have breached the 2023 power unit cost cap. So this is not the same as when Red Bull breached the cost cap two years ago. This is... And and they didn't even breach it like financially. They br- they breached it in like procedure and reporting. Um, and from what I was able to read in the heavy heavy jargon article, Alpine omitted relevant information for the period, had to provide an updated report along with a payment of four hundred thousand dollars as a fine. While Honda failed to accurately report their documentation for the period, which sounds exactly the same, but apparently is completely different because they were different sporting codes, I believe. Um, and for whatever reason that Honda had to pay a six hundred thousand dollar fine and uh, you know, two hundred thousand dollars more than Alpine, who obviously can't afford it because they're shutting down their uh, engine operation coming soon. So yeah, they, they, they spent too much money to make engines that uh, one is really mediocre and one is pretty good. 
Yeah. I mean, omitting could be, like, they just left p pieces out. I see, like, the reporting not accurate information as they could potentially be trying to conceal something just from things I know um, in my field of profession. But yeah. it's interesting that the fines are different. But, huh, well... Good for them for breaching it, but you the know. the real the real question is: Does this actually matter in the grand scheme of Formula One? No. Like I I understand that the cost cap came in to really even the playing field from the teams like Mercedes and Red Bull, who could have budgets that are basically unlimited, whereas teams like Haas and Williams do not. But power units, I don't think. I mean, I can I can understand why you'd also want to put a cost cap on a power unit supplier, but also like the power units are all so different that I don't think that that's the way to regulate them. And I could no, be wrong. This and could I think be the it's best interesting thing that, that they're like regulating suppliers. And it's as like, well, right? Because it, it it's just interesting how they do that. It feels like they're really holding everything so closely, like. You would think Honda could spend as much money or as little money as they wanted that went into their power unit because, like, they are Honda. They're they're a sponsor. They're a power unit supplier, but, like, they're not a team. Right. But it's weird that they're telling them, like, where they can and can't spend their money. But whatever. It is what it is. All this cost cap stuff is – I feel like it doesn't really make a difference anyways because the teams who were at the top are still at the top after the cost cap, so – yeah, exactly. So, and the cost cap is a whole other bag of cats that we do not have the headspace to tackle today. So no, may, may, maybe another day, probably not, but maybe another day. Maybe. <laughs> Going into Brazil, is <laughs> a really big thing. And also, I think it's cool that they've dropped the Senna trailer. So there's a Senna series coming to Netflix. They dropped the tra trailer. Catherine is over the moon ecstatic about it. I refuse to watch it um for personal beliefs of trailers ruin everything so i will not be that, yeah so it's, it's not <laughs> to it's say that you're really not good. excited for this no i'm very very excited and that's why i'm not watching the trailer yeah so I and logic. What, what i thought was actually really interesting is this show was announced four years ago and they yeah. thought it's like finally actually going to be released but the, they they released the, the teaser trailer a few months ago and it was like okay, interesting, you know, new, new Netflix show, not a lot of detail, kind of similar to like the Formula One movie trailer where there's like very thin on detail and lots of action. But this trailer, like, it just looks really good. And, you know, even as somebody who doesn't know a lot about the history of Formula One, obviously we had our, our F1 genealogy project, which taught us both a lot, but the like all of the history and really getting into the details of Senna's career and kind of the, the major drivers that he touched dur during his career and how he got his start to where, how, how he ended up in formula one. This, I think this show is going to be a really good chronicle of it. And it's going, I think it's going to punch a lot of people in the face emotionally with how it just, how it looks based off that trailer. Well, I'm ready for a good cry. So yes. Hit me, so that'll be that'll be your 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 uh, our one of our off season projects. So we'll see how yep. it goes. Perfect. Eventually. Well, that's all I have for this week. I think yeah, we can there really wasn't much. Jump into well, we've had races back to back to back, so yeah, we're running out of stuff to talk about. Lies, we'll talk about mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are in Brazil this weekend. We are in Sao Paulo. I love Brazil. It is my favorite. Okay, I can't say it's my favorite South American country because all my Argentine friends will get mad at me. Besides Argentina, it is my favorite country in South America. Sao Paulo is so, so cool. Like we've said earlier, we're obsessed with this race. Um, and there's always something that goes crazy. Like last year, we had the whole tire thing. So like in the beginning, a tire flew. It hit multiple wings. There's lots of damage. There were crashes. Um, you never know what you're going to expect from Brazil. And again, this weekend, we're going to have rain. 
Yeah. And and to, to clarify or to dive in a little deeper onto the bouncing wheel, the bouncing <laughs> wheel came from the Kevin Magnuson, Alex Albon crash and the wheel one of the wheels from one of their cars broke off the tether, which is actually pretty rare and speaks to like how significant that crash was and bounced through the field and hit both Oscar Piastri and Danny Ricardo's rear wings that fortunately the race was red flagged. So they had time to fix both of those cars or those cars also probably would have been out of the race. And it was very touch and go for a while of like, are they going to be able to, move forward with the race and then will they have time to to repair everything so that was one of the f- like fun moments from that red flag period and we also had a sprint along with the grand prix the sprint was actually kind of exciting max won it lando was p2 checo was p3 in the sprint and My max, also things won have the- changed. <laughs> max won the race lando was in p2 again and fernando alonso was p3 probably won't be p3 this year and then something really weird happens but it probably will be a rain race so you never know you never know yeah we have a lot of rain in the forecast saturday afternoon which will obviously affect qualifying and then also on sunday which will affect the race which was the weather forecast as of wednesday night when i checked it and this was like wednesday at like 11 30 at night when i wrote up the rundown so We'll see how much that changes because things it, can turn on a dime down there. You never yeah, know. The, the weather, the weather could get worse. It could get, you know, the 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 rain could completely clear out, which we have seen before. But the other wrinkle with this is not only are we going to probably have rain, but we're going to be driving on a completely resurfaced track and pit, which is really great because nobody has raced on this at all since the resurfacing and there's only one practice session because this is a sprint weekend so it's basically going to be like driving on ice and then also rain will make it worse it's gonna be such a rough weekend So normally when tracks are resurfaced, they have like other circuits racing and driving on the track or they'll have support races that are going. But like Catherine said, no one has raced on this. So it's not just that it wasn't like raced on last year. No one has touched this since they resurfaced it. So yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think. I think there will be a lot of reliance on on used tires and as as opposed to like the brand new new slicks if if we use slicks uh you know if if we go into like inters or wets though no one ever uses wets even when it's raining it's a whole new ball game so it'll it'll just it'll be really interesting to see what the tire strategies look like this weekend I hope we have Bernie Collins because she's very good at talking tire strategy and I think this is going to be this would be a really good weekend to have her with Sky Sports so I can only hope that she will be with them and Other things that I predicted in our Mexico reaction was that Red Bull and Max would make the decision to take an engine penalty in Brazil, which they are. Max is going to be replacing his engine. Right now, it's only a five-place grid penalty. Hi, Winston. Based on the elements that he's changing, it's only five places, and this only impacts the Grand Prix, not the sprint. So, like, when Liam Lawson was racing in Cota and he took a new engine, it did not impact him in the sprint. It only impacted the Grand Prix race. It could turn into a back-of-the-grid penalty if they change more elements, but right now it is just a new engine, so it's only five places, so... We'll see how that impacts things. But as we know, based on the you know, driver's championship standings and constructor's championship standings. All Max needs to do is keep pace with Lando and stop scurrying around. So we'll see how this goes this weekend or if we're going to have another weekend full of shenanigans and penalties. Or the kids can keep fighting and Ferrari can keep climbing. Well, I think Ferrari's going to keep climbing either way. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Also, love to see it. What one of our favorite, favorite F1 figures, former driver, Seb Bettel, was around and he was there with his mission to raise awareness for environmental uh, conservation. So maybe you remember several years ago, two years ago, maybe he was in Suzuka and he had a bunch of um, beehives and beehouses on turn two. They changed the color of the um, like warning strip to be a bee and a bunch of drivers came out and painted 
the beehives with him in support. Well, this weekend he was there and they had a huge Senna replica helmet made all out of recycled materials, which is really, really cool. Although he's not still on the grid, he is still very involved in F1 with environmental conservation and awareness, which is always cool to see. We love Seb and I think his cause in this mission is, you know, very noteworthy and good for him. And it's also really cool to see all the current drivers involved to really help bring awareness and and support his cause. Yeah, there were, I believe, 16 of the current drivers on the grid that were out there with him within this giant helmet. And there's a picture of them all crammed into the helmet and like all their faces peeking out of the visor, which is pretty cool. You can see that on social media. It's on the um, F1 official Instagram. But yeah, it's it's really cool. Obviously, this is the 30th anniversary of Senna's passing. So all of this recognition is really cool. And then I think one of the coolest is Lewis Hamilton will be driving Senna's McLaren from the 1990 title winner. And um, so that will be on Saturday afternoon after qualifying. Uh, And of course, Lewis, as we know, loves Brazil. He's an honorary Brazilian citizen. So this is like his home away from home away from home. I still have questions on that, but... (laughs) I, I mean, same, but they have adopted him and... Good for him. Every time we go to Sao Paulo, we have to remember that Lewis Hamilton is an honorary Brazilian citizen. Yes. He'll also be wearing a Senna helmet this weekend. Um, It actually looks pretty cool. Which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I do like it. And then Esteban Ocon has a Brazil-themed helmet, and then Oscar Piastri's changed it up, and he has an Android sticker helmet. Um, They don't grab me, but... You know. I actually, if if I looked at the three of them, I think that I, I like Esteban Ocon's best. It just, like, color-wise, it's, I think it's just, it's a little different. And, you know, Oscar Piastri is just, like, going straight into the, like, hey, we have sponsors here at McLaren who need some extra recognition this week, so we're going to make a helmet. And it does kind of look fun. You Like, there's all these different, like, Android characters that are, like, dressed up in different ways, and it's kind of, like, find, find all of the different little androids. Yeah. I don't know. I think I like Hamilton's just because, like, I appreciate how much he loves Senna and the Senna family and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. But anyways. All right. Yes. Should we get into Brazil predictions? Let's go. We have so many. All 27 of them. So many. Um, Okay. So (laughs) let's do the sprint race first. So who do you have for sprint pole? That's a great question. What did I do? Uh, My sprint pole is Lando. Okay, so I just want to preface all of my predictions. I'm going hard that Max and Lando are going to are going to take each other, each other out. <laughs> so my sprint pole is Max. <laughs> okay, but then if you go into my sprint podium, Max and Lando are going to screw each other over. So the podium will be Oscar, Charles, Lewis. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> mine is Carlos, Max, Lando. But Carlos doesn't do well in sprint races. I know. So I'm be- like, because Carlos like only does P5 in sprints. And I'm like really optimistic with this apparently. But we're, we're going to see how it goes. And, you know, I I have very little faith in any of these predictions. So no, we're just, I'm, 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 I'm just throwing darts at this point. I'm, so. I'm trying so hard and I am being so incorrect. <laughs> All right. Well, let's continue to be incorrect with our P8 pick. So for the sprint races, we do a P8 prediction. P8 is the last place when you, or huh, sorry, yeah. is the last place when you get points. You get one point for P8, but we give ourselves three because it's so difficult. So who is your P8 pick? My P8 pick is Mr. I'm not here to make friends, which I said that that was what he was thinking. And he has confirmed this week that he is not here to make friends. Liam Lawson. The new, the newest asshole on the grid. <laughs> I mean, he literally came there. I, I saw a quote from him today. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win. And I said, like, I, I, I called it. So he's yeah, I'm going to win though. Like, no, I'm but sorry. he's, but he's, he's going to, to be pretty, pretty decent. And so anyway, I picked him for my P8 pick. Okay. Well, um, I have none other than our friend, Evan Magnuson. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm sold on Haas now, so there we go. I mean, they um, are okay. on a high. They are, they are. Okay, then we move into the actual Grand Prix race. So, ah, this pains me so much. 
But I put Charles on pole. So did I. Ah! Yay! Okay, again, going with the theme that one, Max has to take a penalty and Lando is just, you know, Lando and they're going to fight. Yeah. Um, so who did you put your for your podium then? Mine, for whatever reason, is Carlos Charles Max. Okay, okay. So I'm still in the camp. I'm still in the camp of Lando and Max are going to take each other out. So I have Charles Carlos strictly because he starts on pole and because there will be team orders to keep him there. Yep. Um, and then I put George, which also pains me. Okay. To I know it pains me, but I just feel like this is going to be a strong weekend for Mercedes. I don't know why. And George always seems to do well in Brazil. So yeah, I mean, he did win in Brazil two years ago. Two years ago. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of forgot. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> okay, let's so move P10. on to P ten. Who's who's your P ten uh, for Brazil? Um, I haven't put this one in for a while. I don't think I also haven't looked at the spreadsheet lately, so that could totally be a lie. But I'm going with Albon. Okay, that's fair. He's struggled the last few races, but why not? Yeah, may- maybe. It. Hope for the best. Um. So I recognize that this is probably not going to happen, but a girl can hope and dream. Um, I have Fernando. I know he's sick, and I know, like, he's not doing amazing, but, you know, I'd like to see him get some more points this season. So. It it would be nice. I mean, it also would be nice to see Aston Martin further up the grid, but I also think it could be really funny if they don't do well, and then all of a sudden Haas overtakes Aston Martin. It wouldn't be this weekend, but Haas... Does have a chance, a slim one, to overtake Aston Martin for P6 in the Constructors? What is it? Hold on. No. Is it yes. P5? Because P- it's it's uh, McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull, <laughs> Mercedes. No, they're in Ast- P6 right now, so, so to Aston hop them for P5. Yeah. Yeah, P- P5, which I think would be kind of hilarious. And, I mean, it would also be really bad for Aston Martin, so... We'll see how that goes, but... Michelle, you know. Michelle. Um, okay, and then just for funsies, Catherine and I do who's going to surprise in a positive way or maybe negative, depending on how you look on it and if you want to do yep. two oopses, and then who's going to do an oops. So, Catherine, what is your big surprise this weekend? So, my biggest surprise is that there will be five or fewer DNFs this weekend because we had a bunch of DNFs last year in the Grand Prix. So, and with, you know, based on the weather, I think that if we have, I, I, it would not surprise me if we had more than five. So, I think five or less would be a surprise for, for me. Yeah, I think I'd take the over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. especially resurface track and weather and nobody's yeah. driven on this for forever. I think that we, we could be, you know, ice skating and bumper cars. Yeah. Oh, well, I kind of on a more positive note. Maybe I have Haas is going to have a double points weekend. Ooh, now I don't, I don't want in the Grand Prix, not the sprint. I don't think they can yeah. get double points in the sprint, but the Grand Prix. I think they'll get double points again. So I can we'll see, see that happening. And then for my in- highly anticipated who's going to do an oops, Checo does not get to sit in the hot seat. He gets to take a, a breather this week. Um, but I am giving the oops to Max and Lando. I think they're just going to go at each other all weekend long fighting for the driver's championship and I think they're just this is the race especially with the conditions that something bad's going to happen yeah my mine is that Red Bull is going to continue shooting themselves in the foot which really is the Red Bull Max side of the garage Checo is as we know just Checo's continues to dead. be a re- he, he <laughs> continues to be a re- <laughs> be irrelevant there there is no there is no foot left to shoot over there but yeah and then I, I've been hearing rumors of like this is going to be Checo's last race with Red Bull and then like Red Bull is going to like pull some contractual magic within these uh three weeks between what is it Brazil and Vegas Vegas and yeah, Vegas is next. Yeah, Vegas is is next. So I don't know necessarily how much I believe that, but it'd be funny if it did, especially based on how we were sitting and what we were talking about with Checo going into the summer break. 
<laughs> yeah, it was the summer break. I believe had so many like Danny's long breaks back. here. <laughs> Danny's going to Red Bull. Wait a minute, Danny got fired. So yeah, so I I think that you know Red Bull and Max will continue to be stupid. Where, like I said, all Max needs to do is keep pace with Lando because Lando does have a significant amount of points. It's like basically he needs to outscore Max by twelve every race, which is not easy considering that Max, while he is struggling in the Red Bull and the Red Bull is not fast right now, yeah. that's still a lot of points to have to overcome every race so all max needs to, to do like is not average around. he just needs to be like completely average which for win. for somebody like max verstappen son of yas verstappen who is not okay with average and allegedly left max at a gas station for ad- average is not exactly the easiest thing to do that's fair that's fair but what are you gonna do Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited to see what happens. It should be pretty chaotic, just considering conditions, both weather and the track. I'm very excited to see. We should have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. Because um, I think it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. Or no, it's not raining at all tomorrow. I can't I remember. Don't think so. When I look, Here. it keeps changing. I'm going to look at the, I'm going to. It keeps changing. I'm going to look it up again. This, so it is. It is Thursday. Happy Halloween, everyone. And cur- at at almost six o'clock at night, it's almost time for dinner for Bishop. We've got rain on Saturday between, and this is, I think, local time, between 10 and 4. And on Sunday, rain forecast between 10 and 7. So that's pretty much the the middle of the day this um it'll it'll definitely impact grand prix qualifying it sh- should also impact impact the sprint on mm-hmm. saturday yeah. and then the race is definitely going to at this point definitely looks like it's going to be a wet weather race that between 60 and 50 and 60 percent chance of rain on on sunday in that time of in that those specific times of day oh, and see this is going to really mess up everything because of like Friday, the cars go into Park Ferme for the sprint, and they're probably going to have different configurations based on weather. Yeah. And, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Well, I'm it, it means it sprint qualifying is going to look really, should look pretty different, especially mm-hmm. if sprint qualifying is dry and the sprint race is wet. And we've seen teams before who have chosen to sacrifice quality pace in favor of race setup mclaren is the first one that comes to mind because they had a wet qualifying that they sacrificed for because they knew that the race was going to be in the dry and it worked out in their favor so that's we'll probably see some teams that are going to do that and so we might have an unsuspected pole sitter yeah which is fine I mean, it's because for the race, they'll have the same setup because it'll be wet and wet, but it should be interesting to see what they do for the sprint. So. Yeah. And then even even just in, in general, um, the Grand Prix qualifying, wet weather qualifying is always just wild and who knows how bad the, you know, the, the weather when it is raining is going to be because that will also impact it. So really, we have no idea what it's going to look like. Mass chaos in Brazil. Yeah, which pretty we much. love. Maybe okay, we'll Catherine. have another Haas on pole. May- oh, God. Let's hope not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just ruins everything. Okay, so let's get to – we're at the end of the, the podcast, so it is time for your F1 fun fact. So, Catherine, what is your F1 fun fact for us for today? So I got the idea for this fun fact – last week when we were talking about drivers who have driven for like 800 teams so that I, I got this idea for them in from Ruben's what Maricel, you're talking you know about you are <laughs> yes in the the Mexico predictions and I was thinking well who is the driver who has actually driven for the most constructors and is this a driver that we actually talked about in our F1 genealogy series like Rubens Barrichello, Giancarlo Fisichella, you know, Ascari or Prost, like who, you know, Daniel Ricciardo, who, who has driven for the most teams? And it took some digging, and this was actually not the easiest thing to find because facts are weird but we can thank uh, statsf1.com again but the driver who has driven for the most constructors is a driver uh named chris amon who is was from new zealand drove from 1963 to 76 do you want to guess how many teams he drove for all 10 no more than that oh 12 14 what 
Yeah. In in his career, he drove for 14 different teams, including the Williams precursor, Wolf Williams. Yeah. Well, did he drive for Ferrari and McLaren? He he did drive for Ferrari and McLaren. Well, that's really aging him. Interesting. Yeah. That's so, so interesting. Yeah, and he, along with, like, Martin Brundle, has also been called one of the best drivers to never win a race. He finished P2 three times, Silverstone in 1968, and France and Belgium in 1970, and then he finished P3 eight different times in his career. He is one of those drivers who had a pretty decent career lengthwise in Formula 1, and he drove for so many different teams. Yeah, well, 14, that's insane. I thought yeah. it would be someone got, like, eight or something, but... I thought so too, but it, yeah, 14 and that's by far, I don't remember who was the second, but um, the second was only 11 different teams and only, only, <laughs> uh, only 11. It's still a lot. And I think Barrichello is only like six or eight. So Barrichello feels like he's driven for a lot of teams, but, but not it. nearly as many, but it just feels like it because he drove for relevant teams or wow. notable teams. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a fun, fun fact. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. Well, okay, so tomorrow we have free practice one, and we also have qualifying for the sprint. Then we go right into the weekend. Make sure that you follow us along, follow along with us on our Instagram, going.off.track. Catherine's really good about updating it. Sometimes I throw my two cents in there. Um, and then up next, coming out on Monday, we will have our Sao Paulo recap episode dropping. So make sure you tune into that as well. That has been our Sao Paulo prediction podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.